Clip Tips video from Go Engineer. Hello, my name is Joseph Catrona. Today's topic is about how to bring in SolidWorks files and track the custom properties by bringing it onto the data card. If you already have custom properties in your file, that's considered metadata that we want to capture. So for example, I've got a couple of files on my desktop. One happens to be this pen. And if I look at the properties, we have certain pieces of data that we're tracking, created by, created date, revision, part number. Now, when I bring that into the vault, I would like for those values to populate on the data card. Revision should be correct. Description should be there. Part number, etc. Now, in order to do that, first thing you need is a vault, Enterprise PDM. If you don't have Enterprise PDM, uh, feel free to reach out to myself or anyone at Go Engineer for more information. And the second thing you'll need is access to the Enterprise PDM administration tool. So once right in here, we can click there to log into the vault, expanding it out. That'll ask you for your credentials. You'll want to log in as someone who has access to modify cards, uh, administer cards. So there is a couple of permissions pertinent there, one being a user or group permission to update the design of cards, another being an administrative permission to update variables. And once you have those rights or you've logged in with an administrative uh, set of credentials, then uh, you can move on to creating a data card. Now, in order to create a new data card, I'll right click in the cards node and say new card. Now, I already have a data card started uh, with revision, created date, and created by. Just to jump ahead for the sake of time, I'm only going to be throwing the last final one on here for part number. So, I'll cr start with static text. That's these over here that don't change, more or less label labels. And I'll say that this is part number. So I know that the data that I'm bringing in has these pieces of data. I may have tons of other data that I want to track going forward in the vault. And I can add those as well to my new SolidWorks part card. Actually, this, part, this card is going to apply to SolidWorks parts and SolidWorks drawings. It's a file card. And this is SolidWorks CAD card is the name I've chosen. Now, to add part number on here, I'm just going to use an edit box. And then I know that I don't already have a part number variable. I have number that I'm using, but I don't have a part number variable. So I'm going to use this button to open the variable editing tool. There's a button here for new variable. I'll say this is part number. Now, the ability to connect this variable to the custom properties is 100% contingent on getting this area right. So underneath naming and creating a variable, choosing what type it is, we have attributes. So I can say new attribute, and I like to start from the bottom on this and decide what files I'm interested in mapping this variable to. So I want to push and pull this variable, part number, into and out of the files. What kind of files? In my case, they're SOLIDWORKS files. As you can see, there's lots of choices here and you can key in your own. Now, the next piece is the block name. Now, there is a right and a wrong way to do this. For this kind of file, it should be set to custom property. If I was using AutoCAD files, I would want to set it to here. So I'll set that to custom property, the attribute name now, if you're creating new variables that will map into the files in the future, sure, name this however you like. Part, number, maybe. Maybe you want to remove the space in the middle and choose to format that however you like. In our case, the question is how to bring in data and have this map. So this piece right here is the very important piece that must match with the custom property name. So this attribute name for the variable should map the custom property name exactly. So in order to do that right, I'll jump back to SOLIDWORKS and take a look at how 
the previous drafters, or maybe it's been a long time since I did it, but how they named this is exactly how I need to name my attribute. So it just turns out that it's part NO. Well, that's how I'll name the attribute back over in the variables editing dialog. So it was part space NO. I'll save that. And then now that I've created the new variable, I can assign it to that field we were creating. So I've got a part number there. Now I'm ready to save my card. I'll save it as the test SolidWorks CAD card. And it is applying to those file types. And I'll go ahead and just make it apply in this folder. Uh, make sure that these look fairly decent in terms of spacing and sizing and then we're ready to jump out and test it importing metadata so maybe I'll take this card this CAD file and cut paste that over to the import folder so we can see my new card is in use there now let's take a look at the pin file one last time and check the custom properties so I've got a creation date, a created by, rev B, and a part number. So now I can bring that in and reasonably expect that that data will fill out appropriately. This is a bi-directional push as well. It should be pointed out that as long as I have this file checked out, I may change the part number or the created date. Maybe that's inaccurate. In fact, it was a couple of days ago that this file was created. So I can save that and then when I open it I can be sure that the property now will be changed to the 19th as well. So that's a bi-directional push once those attributes and blocks are correctly mapped. So copy in that mirror part and notice that it's created by, created date, and revision are mapped as well. It appears that part NO must be empty in this part, so I'll go ahead and fill it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And open that to verify. So there you have it, just a quick uh, example of how the attribute must be set to equal the custom property for the data cards if you want that data to be pulled in when importing your data into EPDM. So that's it for this video. I hope it helps. Feel free to reach out if there's anything we can help with uh, here at Go Engineer. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know if this is useful information or if you'd like to see any different videos in the future, feel free to leave a comment for that as well. Thanks for watching.